Okay, so this was just to continue the test because neither of us want to drink kale and celery juice alone. Um, we've just got an orange, an apple, two cups of carrots and a half of beetroot in here. I'm just going to turn them on and see what happens. We haven't cleaned them. Well, actually, one thing first. Let's just see before we do that if it's easy to remove. Okay. So at this point, there is some leakage just from the celery and kale underneath here. Um, was that a leakage or did you just drop it? That was it? a drop. Okay, so it was there just this little bit of leakage? Yeah. It's very, very minuscule. Actually, Roy, camera, please. Thank you, sir. I'm going to buy extra charges, let me tell you. I charge it, but then it goes down, so it was fully charged this morning. No, it wasn't. That's right. Lift it off. And um, I've always made a drop, which you can clearly see, but then above that on the white ring, there's a tiny blue. Okay, that's the difference between the two. So um, it's easy to take apart, as in easy to get off the top, and easy to screw off. And easy to put back together. So, so far, none of the major challenges that the customers seem to be having. Let's see if we can block it up without cleaning it and adding other ingredients. Yeah. Just going to alternate the ingredients today. It's very hot in this kitchen. <laughs> We've got some lime. With the skin on, we've got some carrots, as I said. Oh, that seems to just push all that fog out. Then the skin and everything? Yeah, skin and everything. I've only cut the carrots in quarters. So really we've done a fairly, I can tell there's nothing caught in the feet, in the waste tube, there's no celery left in there, everything's pushed out just fine, it didn't get clogged or blocked at any point, it was easy to remove after the celery and kale went through four cups of each. Um, again, you know, I'll just turn them off now, um, I guess because we've done it in the other ones, we'll do it with this. About. 700, 650, 50 to 700 of pulp, and just to make the comparison, which that sauce wouldn't come on this side, 450 of juice. Same. No juice is enough. Yeah, so both juices perform. Uh, put in that was me. And Roy did yeah. the mess on the floor. And um, that's boy juicing for you. I just did one as well. Um, yeah, both juices are still going. Neither of them are overheated. We'll just do one last test. Can I pull it off? I can pull it off. Can I pull it apart? I can pull it apart. And I'll just lay out the pieces and we'll have a look. There's no celery pulp or fibre caught in there. Standard amount of pulp here. You know, the only difference that I feel like we might have done to the customer, I am seeing the same, no juice has come through since we've changed it. The juice that's leaked underneath there is still just 
a little bit of kale juice. It's definitely kale juice, you can tell by the colour of it. There is a little bit of pulp in the little um, feed tube at the bottom here, but certainly if we kept juicing it would just push through. Mm -hmm. And the last thing that I juiced was carrot, and the last thing in here is carrot. Um, everything's come apart, we've made a huge mess in the kitchen, but um, yeah, there's no blockage down here. Tiny little bit of celery fibre if I pick at it, but nothing blocking the port, and still I can see carrot and beetroot in there. What are you seeing? There? Oh, so there's a bit more on there in terms of um, the carrot. There's only a tiny bit of celery on there, or maybe that's apple. Um, I think that's apple. Actually. Probably apple. Yeah, the celery is um, fibrous, and that's not. So. Totally. The inside of here, we got the. If you look at that. So Looks actually, like there's a bit more in here. You sure it's got more waste inside the um, the basket in the in yep. the sieve or strainer? Okay. How's the yeah? See again, it's pretty much the same. That's the, pretty much the same. And then what do you got in the bowl? Here. You have a look. Yeah, look, there is actually more celery fibre still mm. caught in the Hurum than there is in the Optimum 400 juicer, but. You know, but we're talking minuscule amounts and it was still juicing and the pulp that was coming through. So there certainly wasn't that much even in the, mm. in the optimum one. Let me hold that for a sec. Yeah. I can see one little bit in here and that's, I think I've got it now. So that's the comparison between the optimum 400 and the Hurum 400. The biggest thing I've noticed, they've done pretty much the same job all the way through. The optimum 400 did leak. If you will get underneath here. Um, any other major differences? No real major differences. I noticed the Hurum has more of a uh, a froth thing happening. Yeah, definitely. Um, definitely. And uh, uh, should we check the pulp? See how much pulp comes through? Uh, yeah, all right. Let's just yeah. check the pulp and get those bowls and sieves. And that's it. But this is the kind of testing that I did before, just with drinking juices um, that I was drinking. And um, what I thought was reasonable quantities for a small home, non-commercial juicer. I certainly didn't expect that we would be hearing complaints, and I apologise if that's my fault. Um, for more than four cups of celery and four cups of kale in one go. Um, as Rory mentioned earlier, I don't think we were filming that a juice feast does recommend a head of celery a day. So if someone's juice fasting, they might read that they need to drink a, a head of juice, a celery a day, but of course it doesn't have to happen in one juice. They can definitely spread that throughout their juices. And celery is quite a strong flavour. I find like, you know, three or four stalks in a juice is fun and never had any challenges with it blocking up. The only time I've seen that happen is yesterday when Rory did it. He left all the stalks on and actually I do normally use, leave the stalks on um, the kale, he left all the stalks on, which I didn't think was really a challenge, but he did also leave the celery in larger sized pieces. So, pulp in the juice, again, about a tablespoon is she? You want? No, that's fine. Um, do you want to rinse that though quickly? And then I need to get back to my desk. <laughs> So sorry Mario Brian about the um, not nor same quality video that we normally do, but just purely for a test purpose, both juices are still running. Both juices are not blocked. Um, the only thing that we've done extra to what we recommend to the customer is those celeries were in smaller pieces as per the attached picture. Pardon? I don't need to see that. Don't need to see that. Um, yeah, so I think we've done a great job here. Again, the juice that's in the, the pulp that's in the juice with the Hurum is slightly less. Like, we're not talking much. Like, I'll show you the plate in just a second. It's wetter though, definitely. It's definitely a wetter pulp, but you can't seem to get any more juice out of the pulp, can you? Mm. We're doing the same action. Mm. All right, if I can have my table screen, my dessert screen. So there's... Again, a very similar amount. Look, um, we'll take a photo of this as well. Mm. You know, what do you reckon? If anything, I'd say there's less pulp from the Hurum. Not by heaps, but I'd say there's less. Yeah. Slightly less. I think it's wetter. But yeah. yeah. Nothing that I would say I'm wrong about. We use the same strainer on both, so 
I think we've done a thorough test here. I'm going to let Rory clean up. Huh. See you guys.